All right. Hello, people. Welcome to this episode of the second pro series. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Richardson extrapolation, which I think is a very needed tool for you when you perform simulations and you want to make mesh studies. So first thing about me, uh, I'm Donato Rubinetti. I'm your favorite mechanical engineer. I'm having already the third episode on the Multiphysics channel. And here in that box, I wrote for you as an Easter gift, uh, my, my personal recipe for a pizza dough. And um, yeah, basically you have to mix everything together and then let it rest for three days. And people say, well, 10 grams of salt and five grams of yeast, you cannot do that. That will kill the yeast, but uh, just try it out. Believe me, if it's going for 72 hours in the flowers, that the, there is enough uh, sugar that uh, it can grow. All right, let's jump straight into the topic. When you do modeling, every model you do is wrong. And that's just in the nature of the model itself. That is because you have to make certain assumptions. And it's also because of the software, because of discretization, because of truncation errors, because of numerical diffusion that you introduce. You have seen this picture already in the previous episode. That was done by Tees and in the pro series one. So here you see basically one observed variable value that can be a temperature, that can be a velocity, a pressure uh, in function of the number of cells. So when you increase the number of cells, you get always a bit closer to the exact solution, but you never get close to the exact solution. All right, because that would mean you have a infinitely small mesh, mesh elements, and then just that's just infinity. All right, but we can still calculate that exact solution with the Richardson extrapolation. I will show you in a minute. But first, I think you need to know what the journals say. So when you do mesh studies and when you do modeling as such, sometimes some software tools have by default the first order discretization because it saves you CPU time. But when you want to submit a publication with uh, or a manuscript that has uh, simulation work in it, you should, you should make sure that it has uh, second order accuracy. Why? Because for first order methods, they say that solution accuracy is devastating. All right. And another tool to use is the Richardson extrapolation. So you can basically prove that what you're calculating has has hands and feet. One more word about this first and second order discretization schemes. So look at this, uh, this tube here, uh, a tube with a flow in it. It's a very, very simple calculation. And I want to see the, the velocity profile at the outlet that is here. When I run this simulation with the first order discretization for three different mesh sizes, that is the coarse, the medium, and the fine one, you see that there is in certain parts over prediction and in certain certain parts under prediction. The medium and the fine mesh, they are pretty much uh, on the same line. So that's fine. When we switch to second order discretization, our simulation runs uh, about 10 times longer, but there we cannot see any difference between the velocity profile. So it's just one line, all right? so. What is making us, that makes us a bit more confident. So in a sec, with second order, we can use coarser elements. And that's something that you usually see. When you have a fine mesh, uh, when you have first order, you need to use a fine mesh. When you have second order, you can have coarser meshes. So it's always a bit of a trade-off. Uh, here, that calculation has been done with the same mesh sizes. So of course here, the CPU time is way higher. And that, uh, that can go even to more extreme cases. For example, if you use uh, elements that are order of four, then you can use really coarse, re really coarse mesh elements. Uh, I did search simulations for ultrasonic uh, calculations where you could discretize a wavelength with just four elements, and usually you would need eight. That is a uh, called the uh, discontinuous uh, Galerkin method, but maybe that's a topic for another episode. I want to go with you through this Richardson extrapolation step by step. 
So the first thing you need to do is to run three simulations. And you, you, you do that with three meshes. You have a coarse mesh, you have a medium mesh, and you have, um, you have a, a fine mesh. You have to make sure that the refinement ratio, so that means the, the, the refinement ratio always stays constant. So we jump here from 6.4 to 12.8, and then double again. That can be even a refinement ratio for as long as it's constant, all right? So we do this example with a channel, a 2D channel, which is a meter long and 10 centimeters in height. We have an inlet here that is one meter per second and an outlet that is zero Pascal. It's one of the most convenient ways to perform a CFD simulation. You have one outlet inlet with a velocity and an outlet with a, a pressure, prescribed pressure. Um, we do this with for the first and second order discretization. And what we want to know again is the velocity profile at the outlet. All right, this is the coarse, this is the medium, this is the fine mesh. Ah, uh, no, we do just the first order discretization. All right. Um, <clears throat> the second step you want to do after you run your simulation and you have uh, the first results, you go to the results here and you choose something that is representative for your model. So in that case here, I chose the velocity X component. So in just one direction, I don't choose the velocity magnitude or any other averaged value because that would spoil the accuracy that would just uh, give some wrong impression. So what I do here is I choose the, the variable here, phi, coarse, medium, and fine which is the maximum value of the parabola of the velocity profile. And I report that values here. The second thing, uh, the third thing to do is to calculate the exact solution. So this, these are predefined formulas. And um, basically you get the result then like this, straight like this. And when you plot your values, so you have the coarse mesh, the medium and the fine mesh, you see that there is quite a big jump from the coarse to the medium mesh, and there is less of a jump from medium to fine, and the exact solution is actually quite, uh, quite close to that. That's basically the core of performing a Richardson extrapolation. When you choose a mesh and you choose a coarse mesh, make sure that you use the coarsest mesh that still converges, all right? Because if, for example, you start with a coarse mesh that has about the size of a medium mesh, like here, and you make a, 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 and you refine it, then the fine would be a medium, and the the, me, the the finest mesh would be then even further on. So that means you don't get this monotonic convergence, right? You really want to start a, you really want to start with um, a coarse mesh that is quite different from the medium. Then you get this monotonic convergence and you're fine, you're good to go. All right. And after that, what you can do is to check your discretization error. And so basically just take the relative values. And uh, here you see that uh, even with the courses grid, we are, we are about 1.5% uh, off. And generally that's considered acceptable. Uh, Verstek, this famous book, Introduction to Computational Fluid Dynamics, says that 5% is like what, uh, what we accept as a accuracy for MERS studies. All right, you see that this Richardson extrapolation is something that you can automatize. So I have created here a cheat sheet. Um, you will find the link in the description. So what you do is you have these three steps that I showed you you will just adjust what is yellow here uh, in the description. And then you will find also more, you will find also more uh, checks you can do, for example, the grid convergence index and so on. All right, then that's, uh, that's already it. We are at the end of this episode. So what you learned today is that the second order discretization matters. You have seen how to perform a Richardson extrapolation step-by-step. Step. And I've, I've given you this uh, cheat sheet which uh, you just can use at your convenience. It's um, also a really nice tool to use as math. Maybe the people uh, among you that know uh, MathCAD that has been discontinued. Uh, now is an open source tool called as math. I, I love it. You just uh, can perform calculations as you want. Good. And those are the highlights of this episode. 
Another thing to mention is that on Friday, the 21st April, so in about a month, we will have this workshop, Computational Tools for Data Visualization, has been uh, requested the last time I did, um, uh, we did a poll as well, that visualization is important and that there is a lot of interest there. So it's for free, just go to the website and register. And if you want to make your own episode on the Multiphysics channel, we welcome everybody that has something interesting to show. Just contact me and we will find a solution or we will find a spot.